Uh, can, you, can everyone see my screen there? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, so we're going to put this away. And uh, so, yes, so, so the topic really is, um, you know, how to, how to continue teaching and learning in the, in the best way possible, given everything that's going on, and we've all lived through it uh, to various degrees this year. Uh, and, uh, and so I first want to introduce a little bit who we are. Um, the company uh, is called Entertainment Learning. It's the publisher of LinguaTech. We, we created the company in 2009. Uh, the two co-founders, uh, including myself, had worked in inter information technology, video games, satellite television, online media, mobile entertainment, and edutainment. Um, and so we bring a lot of different uh, experience and disciplines and ideas to the online learning space. And our, uh, our concept really was to identify and, and, and solve the pain point in uh, online learning, which was often that the, you know, the early forms of online learning were really, you know, uh, online uh, PDFs. I mean, uh, uh, textbook materials adapted for, uh, for online which we felt was uh, not working and, uh, and, and really not capturing the power of, uh, of, of online interactivity. So we decided to create something specifically for, uh, for language learning, specifically for the current uh, generation of language learners who really grew up with the internet and with online technology, and to uh, base it on authentic media, interactivity and gamification for a, uh, a totally immersive and uh, a natural way of learning languages. Um, as Yuna mentioned, uh, LinguaTech is uh, currently used by over 2,500 schools and language institutes wor worldwide. And it's also the uh, technical platform and content for a version of the service called Kios, which is uh, currently the world's largest public language uh, learning service uh, and uh, implemented in uh, the Paris region, so available uh, to nine million people in uh, in the Paris region. Um, let's talk a minute about uh, about the uh, the pandemic, um, which really uh, has has and will change uh, education uh, going forward. Education, interestingly, is the industry which has been least affected or changed by uh, digital technology of all industries uh, relying on information. Um, it's the least changed until now, but this has suddenly changed quite a lot. Um, the reality is that mostly in the personal learning and uh, professional training space, technology was already changing uh, education and training quite a lot uh, with, with uh, resources like Khan Academy, Udemy, Coursera. Uh, and quite a few others. And what happened starting in, in, in late February and March was that uh, all of a sudden, and pretty much simultaneously and worldwide, you had uh, this health crisis, you had lockdowns, you had shutdowns of schools uh, affecting nearly 2 billion students worldwide. The, you know, the only, not even in wartime has this happened. Uh, and so very suddenly, uh, there was almost an overnight requirement to switch from classroom teaching to something else. Uh, no one was sure what, uh, but um, all of this constitutes a huge global mass scale experiment in, uh, in online uh, learning. And what we've really learned uh, just in the last six months is greater uh, in terms of experimentation and learning than, than we've been able to accumulate uh, knowledge in the last 10 years. So it's a very, a very special year and a very special moment. Um, what happened when, 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 uh, when the pandemic struck and all the lockdowns started happening is that the obvious, I mean, or the only really solution for, uh, for teachers and for schools was to switch to a form of remote learning uh, meaning basically bringing the classroom uh, to the students in a different way through uh, video conferencing platforms. And, uh, and these video uh, conferencing platforms existed, so that's the good news, 
uh, the less good news is that they were primarily designed for corporate use. Um, so they didn't really integrate a lot of features that, that, that teachers may have been looking for. And also, uh, quite simply, teachers, you know, most teachers had never really used uh, these platforms. They had not been trained in using them uh, or in conducting uh, online classes with their students. So there was a, a very steep learning curve, which had to be uh, tackled immediately and overnight. Um, of course, there were technical issues, bandwidth issues. You know, two-way video is very labor intensive, uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, bandwidth intensive. So uh, not everyone had the right connections and, and, and you had jerky video or, 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 uh, or a video that presented lags or, 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 or other related problems. You had a hardware issues because uh, most of these platforms um, were not optimized for, for a, a range of uh, connected devices. Uh, and not everyone had the right uh, hardware uh, at home. And, uh, and also one thing that started to emerge, not immediately, but, but after a couple months, is uh, students started feeling that always being under the eyes of the teacher with a direct webcam was sort of intrusive, was sort of like a surveillance. And, uh, and, and so this was something unexpected, but, uh, but, but which you started to see. You also, um, so, so what I wanted to make the uh, distinction is between this kind of a remote learning and what I'll call digital le learning, which really are platforms uh, created for learning, uh, mostly uh, high school and, and university but really which have been developed over a number of years, in our case, 10 years. Um, these are uh, learning platforms which are uh, subject specific in most cases. Uh, they're designed for students and teachers uh, and they uh, allow a, a mix or a selection of uh, teaching styles, either teacher directed or autonomous learning. And uh, what they've uh, been able to achieve over, over time and over trial and error and experimentation is an approach which is interactive, uh, multi-platform. They tend to be short sessions, so you keep the attention of the learner. They use uh, uh, learning games and, and gamification uh, and other motivational devices. So really a very different set of, of, of tools. And, and in the next slide, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we can uh, try to make these work together in an optimal way. So since we really don't know what the future holds in terms of future lockdowns or, or reluctance of families to send their, their, their kids to school uh, on you know, five days a week or six days a week uh, as they used to, uh, uncertainty of teachers, uncertainty of public uh, health officials, we have to uh, really be ready to have a, a flexible approach. And, uh, and I think both of these types of tools have their place. Uh, digital learning, as we've just seen, allows each learner to learn at their own speed, which is very important. Uh, the difference in learning speed between students of different abilities in, in different subjects can be as much as 10 times. Uh, so in this, so in, in this regard, digital learning is, is, is very uh, flexible and adaptable to each learner. But also remote learning, uh, so you know, using the the, the, the video conferencing type uh, interactivity, remains important because it's the voice of the teacher, it's the supervision of the teacher, and it's also uh, the only real way to support individual learners in a sort of human interactive way, and and also to to maintain a feeling of class community, and and class projects, which is also important. Um, the, uh, the use of both of these uh, is enhanced by the use of authentic materials and, 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 and real world examples of which, thanks to the internet, we have a endless access. Um, what's also quite important is uh, what I call nonlinear or discovery learning. Um, that is, when you're in a classroom, uh, the tendency is to teach to the curriculum uh, in a linear way, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, according to the textbook or the other materials. And uh, this works less well online. Uh, students and learners are less uh, inclined to just pace themselves and you know, do it in a sort of block by block way, because that's not the way they use the internet. Uh, 
uh, if you anyone you know using the internet will be familiar with the fact that you jump around you try different things you uh, one link leads to another uh, you get curious about something so you investigate and so uh, resources that allow that kind of uh, exploration uh, learning are, are, are really ideal. Um, and lastly, uh, what was uh, really seen in a big way is that uh, simply by switching over to remote learning, but not uh, measuring and, and, and monitoring uh, attendance or completion of assignments or things like that uh, was leading to a lot of um, really non-compliance and uh, an absence. So it's very important, uh, whatever you do online, is to be monitored and, uh, and also you know, to count towards the students' grades. And uh, in the United States, for example, they saw a huge difference when they started making uh, uh, you know, attendance in online classes and completion of online work, counting towards the student grades, and it tripled the uh, engagement of the students. So in terms of implementing an offline and online or 100% online flipped classroom approach, which is one of the, one of the uh, strengths of online learning, um, both have their place. Uh, the flipped classroom approach, which was already being used in normal classrooms, really uh, states that absorbing knowledge, absorbing information, uh, reading, viewing, uh, and, 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 and researching really can be done outside of the classroom uh, and that allows the precious classroom time to be dedicated to more interactive uh, communication between the, the teacher and the students or among the students. So with digital learning you have an ideal uh, resource for uh, immersive learning uh, with authentic materials, for exploring vast catalogs of uh, prepackaged lessons, uh, and also for you know practice with uh, uh, different types of practice and games and so on, um, and you know the examples I've given here uh, come from Lingua Attack. In terms of classroom or remote learning, you've got the you know you've got the teacher who is helping and and coaching the students and providing support, discussion obviously, uh, speaking practice, writing practice, and pairs and group work. So the two of these can really work together for an optimal mix of input and output. Um, in terms of strategies that you can, you can uh, integrate based on very solid uh, learning principles, you have in the field of cognitive neuroscience, uh, the notion that emotion opens pathways to learning. Obviously, we're more open to learning if our senses are engaged, if we're interested, if we're uh, stimulated. And uh, that's why we made the choice of using authentic materials like clips from films or TV series or news items, uh, because these stimulate emotion in the, in the learner, uh, and therefore uh, they're going to learn more effectively. Uh, currency and relevance is important, uh, especially for teens, because teens are going through a, uh, a phase in their neurological development where they are selecting things that they feel are important or relevant to them and those that are not. And those that are not are quickly forgotten uh, and those that seem part of their actual uh, priorities or, 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 or their everyday life or their future, uh, they lock onto uh, mentally uh, much more easily. So uh, that's, again, that's why we, uh, up, up, that's why we renew our uh, content every week we follow the latest uh, developments in, 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 the, in, in film and in television and in, in world events uh, because this really stimulates uh, learning and retention. And the third one is less sexy, but also very important from a, from a cognitive neuroscience uh, point of view, which is repetition with variation. Clearly, when you see something several times in, in slightly different ways, it's telling your brain that this is information is important and, and therefore it creates different neural pathways that lead to the same result, which is retention in long-term memory. So uh, if you just drill and you drill in the same way 10 times, by the fourth time the person gets bored and, uh, and, and you're defeating the purpose. If you find ways of repeating something with variation, 
through different types of exercises, different types of games, different types of, uh, of reviews or testing, then that really helps with long-term uh, retention. In terms of gamification and games, I should say, um, you know, uh, when you play a video game, uh, it's very different from traditional uh, school learning. In school learning, uh, you're asked to learn, you take a test, and then, uh, and then failure leads to, uh, leads to failure. You know, you, you, you fail the test and you've failed. In a video game instead, it's, everything is built on failure in a positive way. So you try a level, you make a few mistakes, uh, you fail the level and then you try again. And then you learn from your mistakes and you do a little bit better. Maybe you try, maybe you fail a second time, but the third time you make it and you get through the level and you get to the next level and then you have new challenges. So uh, this, this, uh, th this kind of game learning is very important to keep uh, students stimulated and, 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 and with a positive mindset rather than feeling that failure is failure. Uh, that's why we use scores instead of grades, because a grade feels like a, uh, a label uh, of, of, uh, of achievement, whereas a score is simply a, 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 a sort of tunnel to a better score. Uh, and, and so that's, a, that's an important uh, aspect of gamification as well. And then, you know, as, as we all know, and we've all seen, tangible rewards like badges or medals or, 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 or other kinds of icons um, for performance and progress, again, uh, help create this motivational ecosystem. And finally, uh, if we switch to, uh, you know, the best in what we know of, of, of pedagogical approaches in, in learning languages, we know that immersion is, is a great way to, to, uh, to, to learn languages. It's how we learn our first language and, uh, and it's how we learn most effectively uh, new languages. So not everyone has a chance to uh, spend a, a month or two in, in Oxford. Not everyone has, a, has a, the ability to, uh, to do a travel study like that. But if we immerse ourselves in authentic language on a regular basis, then we start to achieve the same uh, objectives. Um, next, the lexical approach. Again, this is largely how we learn our, our first language which is to gradually become familiar with not just words, but chunks of language, expressions, uh, the way things are said, uh, concatenations. Uh, and so this is, this, is, uh, this, is, this is what we base Lingua Attack on as well. Um, one thing that we often see in, in a more traditional school curricula is this willingness or this, this, uh, this, this uh, insistence on saying, oh, you know, my students are, are only A2, so I, 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 they, you know, I have to avoid that they be exposed to anything which is B1 or B2. Um, again, that's not the way people learn. When you, when you try to learn a language by going to a new city in a, in a foreign country, you don't limit yourself to the A2 part of the city. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't exist. So being occasionally confronted with language which is beyond your skill level really actually accelerates your learning and also keeps you stimulated. Um, which is why uh, even though the, the teachers can assign uh, content of a specific level, we don't limit the uh, access to the catalog of, of, higher, um, of higher level uh, modules. As far as grammar is taught, we, we uh, teach it and, and, and it's recommended to teach it inductively. That is, rather than start with the grammar rule, which is out of context and, and, and kind of abstract, uh, it's derived from a piece of, 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 of content. And then the question is, well, why did they say it that way? And seeing it in context uh, with all the other verbal and visual uh, cues and, and, and within a sort of story helps you understand uh, the timelines and therefore the logic of the grammar. Uh, and that leads to the last point, which is make learning contextual uh, when we see word lists which are out of context, when we see grammar rules which are out of context, when it's not related to a situation, uh, a story, a, a, a timeline, something that makes it real or, or, or gives us a logic uh, as to why it's so, um, it's less effective. So that's why everything uh, on LinguaTAC is, is contextual. Um, 
And uh, just in terms of using educational technology to really make the, the student learning experience uh, more fun, more effective, more relevant, um, going back to the previous point, I think the, the only way forward really is to have a, 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 a flexible set of tools uh, which allow us to handle any situation if there's a new lockdown, if the school district decides that uh, there's going to be three days a week of classroom attendance and two days a week of uh, remote learning or, you know, whatever the decision is, then we have the approach, we have the tools uh, to create uh, the optimal mix. Um, also, because each student is different, each household is different, each, each, uh, each set of hardware available is different, as much as possible, um, we should try to use tools and resources that allow uh, students to work on a range of, uh, of devices, whether it's their own laptop uh, or the, the, you know, the household desktop or the tablet they have or, or their own mobile phone. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, it's important not just to limit uh, students to a narrow range of, of, of tools, but really to encourage them to, uh, to use the uh, online resources, a range of them in, in the best way. Uh, and again, this will lead to more stimulation and, and, and richer learning. So you do have uh, extra extracurricular online resources, uh, like uh, one thing you may not be aware of is Simple English Wikipedia, which is a sort of simplified uh, version of Wikipedia that uses simpler language and uh, shorter sentences. Obviously, you've got Google uh, search or even better, a search engine uh, designed for schools called Quant, which is also free and uh, free of advertising. Uh, you've got uh, obviously a, a range of online dictionaries from, from, the, from the big uh, publishers. You've got uh, tools that allow you to make short animations like Animaker. So there's a whole range of uh, fun and uh, safe and interesting uh, online resources that can uh, that can you know add 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 a lot of uh, new ideas and texture to to online learning. And uh, finally, you know what can we do to help students in this kind of uncertain future? Um, I think it's important to let students and their families know that basically you as a teacher and the school have two pro absolute priorities. The first obviously is, is to keep them safe and healthy, and the second is to enable them to keep learning no matter what happens. So obviously this involves physical precautions like, like, like social distancing and wearing masks and on occasion and so on, but also a commitment to say, we will always provide you with the best resources, the best solutions, uh, the best platforms to help you keep learning and, and to enhance your learning. So if anything, uh, to go forward and not to, uh, not to go backwards. And that means that remote learning of, of the video conferencing type has to really evolve from a sort of uh, image of emergency stopgap teaching to one of online coaching and, 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 and classroom community. Uh, and the digital re uh, learning resources uh, that we uh, looked at uh, and which we'll now see really have to be welcomed and embraced by teachers and schools by as a a way of enhancing uh, student engagement uh, learning. Uh, so making them more involved in their learning, uh, making learning more fun and engaging and, and, and really enhancing their motivation. So uh, at this point, before we actually go into a, a quick uh, look at how to create assignments on LinguaTAC, um, perhaps uh, if there's any questions, Asking where the content is coming from. So the content comes from a range of sources. Uh, we uh, take um, clips from uh, the uh, rights holders of the clips who make them available uh, for you know, promoting the latest film or TV series. Uh, you have news uh, broadcasters that uh, make uh, short, short reports available. Um, we take, uh, we have the, the largest um, collection of visual dictionaries available for learning languages, which we take uh, uh, from, um, uh, from photographers uh, who, who provide them rights free. Uh, we create content uh, in the case of LinguaTAC Plus, uh, created by YouTubers um, and uh, by animators. So it, it really is a, is, is, is a mix of things. 
Um, how can we ensure that the technology that we're, we are using is safe? Well, in terms of LinguaTAC, we uh, comply with the strictest privacy uh, legislation in the world, which is the Euro European uh, GDPR legislation, which, uh, which controls privacy and sharing information and all of that. It's incredibly strict um, uh, with no commercial use uh, whatsoever allowed uh, and also imposing all kinds of uh, safety uh, safeguards on how the data is stored and treated and so on. Um, so it is, it is really very, very safe. Data is not used for commercial purposes. And yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, we are, we are, we are really dedicated to learning and not to trying to uh, make money in any other way. And Quant, uh, I actually know one of the uh, founders of Quant. It's a, it's a great tool. You really can find pretty much anything on Quant that you can find on uh, Google search or Bing, uh, so it's a great tool. And of course, uh, the absence of advertising is also very nice for students and their families. Uh, we're seeing now the results of the, uh, of the survey. Um, so they're, they're quite interesting and pretty much conform with, uh, with what we had imagined. Yeah, insufficient uh, exposure to the target language. Uh, is, is a big one, uh, insufficiently engaging learning materials. This is all really following exactly our, our feeling and our instincts when we created LinguaTech. Um, and, and, you know, what, what I often say also is the way uh, young people learn today is very different from the way I learned. Um, uh, you know, I, I grew up obviously with textbooks and, 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 and chalkboards and, 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 and you know, writing homework in, 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 in workbooks. Um, and, you know, when I, when I wanted to find out something, I would go to the encyclopedia and look it up or, you know, and, and, and we're in a different world. We're in a completely different world. And, and so we really have to accept the fact that uh, teaching materials, which are not that different from what they were 50 or 100 years ago, uh, simply are, are, cannot be effective, you know, with, with, with uh, young people today who grew up in a totally different environment. Yeah, and, and, th and this is why I mentioned, uh, you know, remote learning through the video conference platforms as something which can uh, allow group or pairs work even uh, in a sort of a distance learning environment. Yes, occasionally for the integrating uh, uh, authentic video. And really, the reason we uh, developed uh, LinguaTAC in the way we did is because we before started we we, we interviewed about a hundred uh, teachers of you know language teachers mostly teachers of English in different countries, and we saw that they were already doing this, but that it took them a very long time um, to find the right clip to uh, create the questions to to you know to format it you know it, it you know it was very labor intensive it, they would they really wouldn't have time to much time to do it and they would have to do it at home uh, and it would take them a couple hours per exercise, and so we decided to see what they were doing and, and just uh, to prepackage it so that they would have a, 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 a huge range uh, of constantly updated um, video lessons to choose from. Um, and so that's what, uh, that's what we decided to do. So that's, that's uh, part of our approach. Um, yeah, so we've got the uh, authentic content, speaking opportunities, which absolutely is key. And that's, that's why the flipped classroom approach is so important so that that precious uh, classroom time or online uh, virtual class time is, is really dedicated to, teach, to speaking. Uh, interactive online resources, yes. And uh, mobile applications, absolutely. And uh, the LinguaTech mobile application will be available in a couple of weeks. So we're, we're very excited about that too. We've got the fifth one. What are, they, what are students doing outside the educational system? Uh, they're reading books, they're listening to radio, and of course, the big one, they're watching television, films of interest, uh, and videos in their target language. Uh, we were quite surprised when we did our research, and we renewed the research recently, to see uh, how people were using Google search to, uh, to find language learning resources. And one of the biggest, uh, in fact, the biggest uh, search query was music lyrics. Um, people were looking for pop music that they liked. Young people were looking for pop music that they liked. 
and looking up the lyrics and then trying to understand the lyrics. Um, so, so very surprising and, um, and very useful to know. And we have, we have, we have integrated that as well in the, uh, in the platform. So essentially when you log in as a teacher, you've got a teacher panel on the homepage and you've got some shortcuts. Uh, so you just create or schedule a, a, an assignment uh, through the shortcut. There's also a, 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 a navigation uh, under my school, but you can use a shortcut, it's easier. Uh, and then it's extremely intuitive. You just click on create a new assignment and uh, you go and then you add, you, you simply populate the assignment. Uh, well, first of all, you, you, you choose the class that you wanna give the assignment to, you determine the due date, and then you start populating the, uh, the assignment with, uh, with, uh, with units, with learning units, right? Um, and so we have uh, up to four uh, different types of learning units. Um, two, uh, so, so video boosters and photo voc vocabs are uh, under the Lingua Attack standard price plan. And then we have additional units under the Lingua Attack plus price plan, which a unit can, 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 can explain, uh, which are starter labs, which are uh, units for um, uh, beginners in a language, and skill boosters, which are uh, units uh, created with the help of YouTubers for everyday uh, language situations. So you simply uh, populate the assignment with whatever type of, uh, you know, whatever mix of, uh, of, of units and whatever number of units, there's no limit. Uh, so you so that allows you to do it either you know on a weekly basis or monthly basis or or semester basis. It's really up to each teacher. Uh, and then uh, and then you just use the search tools to uh, find the right content that you're looking for. So for example, um, you know you can browse the catalog and simply see something uh, that you like and add it to the assignment. You can, uh, in browsing the catalog, see something that's interesting for another assignment that you have in mind and put it in your favorites uh, so that you can find it easily uh, later on. And you can also use the, uh, the filters uh, to um, filter the uh, video boosters by, uh, by uh, learning level, uh, by CFR level or difficulty level, and also by uh, grammar rule. So it's quite, quite powerful and, and it makes uh, selecting the right uh, units for the uh, assignment quite easy, right? Um, and very quickly, we'll go to scheduling assessment tests. So on LinguaTech, we have uh, assessment tests which are calibrated to the CFR uh, standard, which is the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages uh, created by the European Union. And so these are the very familiar A1, A2, B1, B2 uh, levels. Uh, and uh, so the tests, the CFR assessment tests on LinguaTech are adapt adaptive. Uh, there's a huge uh, set of questions which are compiled uh, according to an algorithm which then uh, increases or decreases the difficulty of the question according to the accuracy of the first answers and continues doing so throughout the test. The test takes about 15 minutes to complete and gives an immediate CFR level visible both to the student and to the teacher. Uh, and therefore, um, what a lot of uh, teachers do is uh, before uh, splitting the, their class or, or before starting, starting teaching their class, they, uh, they put everyone in the class uh, through a, an assessment test to see the, the, the different levels of each student. And then some of them prefer to actually rather than give uh, the whole class always the same assignment, um, they split the class into, into smaller groups according to level, and then they give, uh, appropriate, uh, they give assignments of appropriate difficulty according to, the, to, to each group. So uh, it's very easy to create a test. You simply uh, click on assessment tests, you, uh, you, you uh, schedule a test, you select the class, and you select the deadline. That's it. And then you just hit publish, and then the uh, the, the uh, test appears uh, here uh, for the student in his uh, student panel. And then this is what the test looks like. Uh, it's a mix of, uh, of of written questions, audio questions, visual questions with illustrations, and so on. 
And then uh, as soon as the uh, test is completed, uh, the student sees uh, his result and can even print out a certificate. Um, and the teacher sees the same results. Oh, here we go. Sorry, there's a few questions. Uh, are the assessment tests precise enough to identify the narrower subbands, uh, pre-A1, A1, A2? Um, no, they're not. Um, th the assessment tests on the platform really are meant to give the teacher a quick read on, on basically where each student is uh, and to measure uh, progress. So uh, they're not really designed to be given on, on, on a weekly basis or anything like that. But if you were to give a test uh, every couple of months, um, you should see progress in the uh, in the uh, resulting level of the students who use the platform regularly. Um, they're really not meant to, uh, to to give a precise uh, level, um, you know, which is then usable for 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 other purposes. But it's it's a tool which often uh, teachers simply don't have when they start working with a class. Um, but but they have been designed by uh, uh, language test specialists, uh, and and they are uh, they are quite useful and easy and very easy to uh, to um, schedule. Uh, what's an optimal optimal size of the online classroom? I would say um, I would say that uh, it's it, it's almost the, we almost have to turn the the, the question around. You have a classroom. You have a number of students in your classroom. Uh, and then it's up to you to really figure out how best to organize them uh, in an online classroom. I mean, it, it, if you only have 15, that may be fine. Uh, if you have 30, it may be better to split the online, the, you know, the class into two online classrooms, just so that uh, it's easier to interact with each student. You may wish to have individual sessions with individual students. Um, so it's really up to your own uh, comfort level and, and, and the size of your class and how you wish to interact with your students. There are some good strategies for implementing uh, PBL through digital or remote learning. Yes, well, I mean, certainly uh, in this case, the uh, remote learning uh, tools are useful. Uh, and, and then it goes back to one of the things we looked at, which is suggesting, you know, first of all, researching and, and, and then suggesting to students online tools that they can use uh, to complete that project. Research tools, uh, animation tools, or, 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 or video editing tools. Um, so it's really using the internet to produce things uh, which, which make the uh, online or the project-based learning uh, project uh, more productive, more fun, and, and, and where they can learn through, through that as well. And yes, uh, LinguaTAC is available. Uh, so, so Anulfo just asked if, uh, uh, if, uh, we have other, uh, other learning languages on the platform. The answer is yes. Currently we have, in addition to English, we have French, Spanish, uh, and German. Uh, at the end of October, we will be adding Portuguese, and in December, we will be adding Mandarin Chinese. Um, so you can uh, specify to Mangosteams the learning language you're interested in. Uh, you can even have multiple learning languages, uh, enabling a, a, a student to learn two or three or four uh, languages simultaneously. Uh, and we and and the content is is. Uh, it's the same approach. We take uh, uh, clips from movies uh, from the countries where that language is spoken. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, the units are are all uh, not localized, but created specifically for that language. Um, Devon asks, uh, for what age is the site appropriate? Uh, we recommend the starting age of about eleven or twelve. We feel that uh, uh, younger than that learners need more guidance, more, more human guidance in, 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 uh, in using the platform. You know, they're less autonomous in terms of reading instructions and, and navigation. But, uh, you know, uh, we have plenty of, uh, plenty of learners in middle schools, so around 11 or 12. And there are quite a few uh, units, over 100, based on uh, animated films like Shrek and, and, and Toy Story and so on.